all right uh welcome you guys to our first session in a long time it's been a hot month or so and we are going to start again i mean not really again again but we're gonna play again some far east mysteries all right so first let's do a short recap on what had happened uh to fill up uh you guys' month of emptiness you guys had experienced quite a decent amount of horrors in kestos you saw a woman or rather some people disemboweled messages being left behind by a you're not too sure if it's a cult or a group of people working towards a certain goal you guys are still in the middle of investigating that you have your fair share of drama in Kestas, and you guys decided to travel out to Baybrim to investigate or look into the matter of one of the missing persons who is... Crap, the name was on the tip of my tongue. Um, let me just... Bloop. Wrong chat. <clears throat> Pinned message. There we go. Oh, nope. Nada. What's his name again? Uh, oh my, it's been so long. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Um, recovering data. Uh, nope. Does anyone remember? Uh, wow. What are we trying to remember? Uh, the name of the music person from Babram. The name is at the tip of my tongue, but I can't seem to remember. Oh, the the boxer guy? Yeah, the boxer guy. Uh, is it Darren? Darren Keensmith. There we go, gods. Darren Kim. I looked Keen. at my notes. I definitely do not remember. <laughs> is it spelled with a single or a double R? I wrote ah, it there we go. <laughs> I'm gonna copy and. Uh, uh, there we go. Darren King Smith. Darren Demite King Smith. He went missing there. Uh, about a week or two prior to uh, your you guys' involvement in the investigation. You guys traveled out from Kestos to Babram. And upon arrival at Babram, you guys were greeted by the Babram's finest, bestest, amazing hospitality where you have this incredible incredibly unusual culture you have people who are willing to help you assure you to uh to have a meal with them in what you can assume is like a common eating area which most of them call the hall of plenty 
where you see many people climbing up there, queuing up for food, sitting sitting together with their friends, their neighbors. And you also notice that they call each other brother, sister, cousin, even though they don't look related. You met with uh, one of the waveborns, kind of like a unofficial but official but unofficial leaders of this town. You met Bug Tail Side, a man, a tall, rather tall man with uh, dark brown patchy skin and uh he has this very oddly athletic body despite him being pretty chill doesn't do much and just goes around spend time sharing knowledge and stories you don't really see him do any uh physical activity and he also has like this wonderfully black and curly hair you've met this guy he told you several stories about uh yeah you could say that about uh what you guys were investigating like the story of alzuan Which I believe. Okay, no problem. Which you guys will somehow thread together a certain narrative based on your investigation on. Whichever you guys are focusing on, because I think some of you are focusing on some things, and it's okay, it's all right. You've also met Saya, Saya Balisong, one of the. She's the horn bearer from the temple of the Ma the lost matriarch. She was the fir one of the first few faces that you m you met. She has this, like, very long, invisible facial, facial, facial scar that stretches from the upper left of her forehead down to the left side of her neck. And you can no you also notice that she's also half blind. She also introduced you to you, the culture of Babram invited you to the hall of plenty to eat and enjoy the food there and after you guys has had that whole experience at the hall of plenty you were invited shortly after as you continued to go around talk to people you were told that there is a kind of like a sports group or like an athletics group in Bayrim that focuses on the wind rider, wind riding, wind gliding. It depends on which sport you're talking about and you guys decided to take a chill pill yeah you guys had enough uh crazy shenanigans going on why not take a day's break so we will continue off where we last ended where you guys have just finished your conversation with let me scroll 
with Tasha Tidings. Who is a volunteer host at the Hall of Plenty? And she informs you that her son is one of the leaders of the sports group, Babram First Windriders. Oh. Tasha would look at you. Well, there are, there used to be, but we rather focus on the sp the sports of the sea i believe if you're looking for a gladi gladiatorial match your best bet would be in hiram they explore all sorts of art forms there even martial arts but i'm pretty sure if you ask someone if they want to fight you can always ask them they don't mind a sparring buddy <laughs> uh, i'm more interested in uh, the water sports is there like Someone that can teach us? Oh, I'm pretty sure that my son would be very interested in teaching you guys. I mean, they love... They have a, an understandably deep love for the sport. Just head over. Um, It's north side of, of the town. Just past the coconuts. The coconut fields. Just walk straight. You'll find uh, the temple of the lost matriarch. And then there will be coconut fields towards that. You'll pass by uh, the wave-born Jiren. Jiren Bast's uh, little farm. And just keep walking straight, and you'll eventually find Babram First Windriders. And of course, the Shallows and the Deep are there too. Hey, Hash Brown, if you want some violence, I know uh, a little bit of a water sport that involves a lot of sparring. I think uh, we can go to the water sport and Try it out. Hash Brown okay. is interested. You wanna go into the water sport? Maybe we can get the, those uh, those guys to play with us. In the sure. If Jane and Teresa wants to come, then. That's cool too. I don't want to watch the sea. Well, you better start making your way there. The first, the early waves are the best waves. Hey. Do we have swimwear? They all looked at you, uh, what do you call this? Tasha looks at you. You you don't really need swimwear. Well, you just need basic clothes, maybe uh, a tank top or a short. I mean, we could always go the traditional way where we give you a That's true. <laughs> 
I hope those bandages are waterproof. And you have a lot of sunscreen. <laughs> I can say that those bandages will be able to hold on. Theresa is still with the group. Is there anything you would like to ask, Therizo? You are now in conversation with Tasha... Tasha Tidings. Oh! A book and quill? Why not you take... You visit, um... Why not you visit, uh... Zolin Orr. He's at he's at the temple. He's one of the waveborns here. I'm pretty sure he has a spare book and quill for you to write on. It's along the way towards the the clubs. Oh, it's fine. We have lots of people here who just come for the food, the company, and the hospitality. I mean, if you want to talk to anyone, I'm pretty sure they'll be open to talk to you. And at the back, you just hear uh, someone calling out to her. Dasha! We're gonna need some help here. We have lots of dishes to wash. Ah. Mira is calling me. I will... I will see you when I see you. And she... Ex she... Uh, takes her leave from you guys. To continue her duties. At the Hall of Plenty. So where will you guys now... Head to. I think uh, Thorzil and Hash Crown will go to the Water Sport Club. I'm gonna follow. Okay. I like to walk on the beach, so I take the beach route. Okay, so you take the beach route. So you ask around uh, which direction the beach is you have people telling you oh um just it's right this way they point you towards uh the sound of the waves at the on the at the distance and once you make your way through the alleyways the streets you find yourself you find this slow transition from grass patches to sandy beach you start to re notice that your feet starts to sink into the soft white sand that she with Thor's armor <laughs> that eventually uh turns pink the closer you are to the beach side to where the waves come crashing. Pink. Mm-hmm. Uh, For Thor, bad. you realize that your boots are starting to get some sand inside as your armor kind of pulls you down into the sand. Question to uh, Thor: Are you going to keep wearing your armor? I or don't want to take it off just yet. I want to take it off at the club, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, walk towards like the the higher end of the beach, so that it's like you know, it's a little bit firm, 
where it transitioned from sand to, you know, dirt kind of place. Okay, I understand. Alright, you'll be walking towards that area. For Jane. <laughs> I'm just having fun on the beach. So I just, you know what, I'm just gonna run into the water. Why not? Y you run into the water and... Uh, you're not the only one. You see some of the kids out there playing, being supervised by an adult or two. Oh, I'm gonna play with the kids, man. You see the kids, they're just waddling around the water, splashing in each other. And there's this one kid who's like... Uh, he takes like his hand and scoops it into the water and brings it out splashing this having this like huge kind of like projectile of a little water wall towards you and your some other kids make a dexterity <laughs> saving throw and see if you manage to avoid that why would i avoid that <laughs> oh you're not gonna avoid it okay you just see this kid doing that and then you're like water it got splashed on and you see the kid who did that, s seeing what had happened. Uh, oh no, I'm I'm so sorry. Uh, um, splash me, splash me. I deserve it. Okay, and I splash him, her. Okay, so you spl You also did the same. You scooped up some water and then you like release it towards this kid's direction, and the kid goes like. Bleh! Guys, I'm hit. I'm hit. And then he's like, uh, pretending like he's drowning. He just falls flat on his bum while the waves come like swooshing in at his like, at his like belly level. And he's like pretending to drown. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Are you okay? Are you okay? And then I rush over. You rush over and say, like, it's okay. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm, I'm sitting on my bum. The water's not high enough. Blah, blah, blah. And then the kid is like trying to like uh bring up water as if it's like spl spurting blood all over. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and you're getting even more wet at this point. You are almost soaked. <laughs> Uh, and then you see one of his friends just rush in. He's dying! And then he kind of like jump on top of this boy and use both of you now submerged in water while the waves kind of just roll over you guys. <laughs> 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 Why can to do that? You were dying. I'm trying to save you. Okay, I'm gonna save you too. And then this this kid just rolls over his friend, and then the two of them are kind of having this little uh uh what do you call this um little wrestling match on water. Them just rolling about, water splashing. Ha ha! I got you now. No, no. Oh, and then blood. <laughs> More water splurting everywhere. And you see some of the kids laughing and one of the uh, adults supervising them is watching intently to see if something goes wrong. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna go pretend pretend play with them, cause it looks fun. And then, but the water is salty, and I don't know what's going on. But I just play with them anyway. While you were playing with them anyway, you notice there's this one kid who's like just lying flat on his back, like kind of floating towards your direction because the waves is just pushing her. It's like, you know, if you keep still and you don't move, you will float. It's like flying, but on water. 
this kid is just having like a a, a moment of her own <laughs> like a moment of a existential crisis as she floats on the water she's wise beyond her years you just see her floating eventually her her one of her hand uh, her right hand like bumps onto you and then she turns slowly her, she tilts her head slowly to look at you why are you like that like what it's like as if you have never seen the water before I mean, I've I've seen I've seen lakes, I've seen lakes. It's it's also really big water. Oh, I just don't know why they're salty. Well, Bug said that it's because um, all the water from land comes down here, and uh, and all the it carries down um said 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 it is a Sis, sis said a mm. I I can't say it right just yet. Mm. But it said said sis said it in the men, and it it accumulates, and that's how the water is salty. And it this it this sediment also lets you float. Like me, I am pretending to be a wood. Mm. So if I pretend to be a wood, I'll float? I guess so. And then you see her, she just like moves up, sit up straight. Yeah. I'm gonna try and pretend to be a wood. Mm. You're a little too tall. We have to go a little deeper. And then she grabs you, your hand, and then she pulls you a little deeper to the deeper end. And you hear in the distance one of the ladies supervising saying, Hey, Mira! Don't go too far, right? Yes, I won't. I'm just teaching her how to be a wood. And eventually, the water is like about your chest level. For her, she's already floating. She's just like, like doing the little doggy paddle. Okay, so this is how you do it. You just, you know, bring your feet up, and then pretend you're dead. I say, <laughs> and then pretend I'm dead. But I'm also wearing leather armor, so I don't know what happens. Well, this is um, where we will see how well you're able to um, uh, follow instructions, which is very vague instructions. So make a survival check. That would be a nine. You... Oh, shit. <laughs> you try... You... You try to lay dead, but... The water kind of, like, swells over your face with the waves coming in. So you weren't able to do it... Per se. You, you, were, you were able to get your body lifted, but you weren't used to the waves coming over you, pushing you. That... You couldn't stay afloat. The way that this kid is. The kid is like laughing. <laughs> Don't worry. It, it, it takes a little bit of time. I practice to be dead like a log. On water.
I'm just gonna keep trying then. You keep trying and trying, and you see this this kid uh, helping you out by swimming under you, pushing up <laughs> your uh, your your back up on air. Make another survival check with advantage. I really have no shame. Uh, 23. 23. After several attempts of trying to float, you eventually, once she releases you from her uh, little hands guiding your back and your bum and your neck aligned, you start to feel your body rise on its own the water just not pushing over your face drowning you this time it kind of just sloshes at the side and you feel weightless as you look up to this pristine thick white clouds just float by in the early morning uh oh sorry not early morning it's already like afternoon sun you feel the heat just pressing against your skin the coal the cool uh ocean water just splashing over to cool your skin down for that moment you feel like you're flying. But on <laughs> water. I did it, I did it. Yeah, you did it. And then you see her, she's like holding your hand while the two of you are like floating and the waves just pushing you closer and closer to shore. That's how you, um, float. Is it magic? No, it's, magic. it's normal. I'm pretty sure you could do this in, on, in the lakes too. I... Maybe I'll try it next time. Mm -hmm. Not that done it before well, you've done it now and then you start to see all the other kids seeing what you're doing and they they also like kind of swim up to the uh deeper end and they float and they each hold hands like little otters like they lock come come and then you you feel you there's one kid beside you he his hair all wet from playing around he locks up his arm with yours, so now everyone's like interlocked and floating together. I, I'll, I'll, I'm just gonna enjoy it. And then the kid turns around and says, Look, we're a bigger log now. We're a bridge. And as you guys do that, there is this one bird that flies above, swoops down, lands on one of their bellies, and hops around. Sometimes it pecks on, on, on their belly and you go like, <laughs> and you just feel like the, the inter uh, from the interlocked uh, arms that you guys have, you can feel the movement of this person. <laughs> As he, like, just shoves around. Eventually, you guys are close enough to shore at this point. As the wind, as the waves just push you guys further uh, back to inland. 
and some of the kids start to like separate and continue playing with the water some of them start to dig a hole in the sand One of them even built a kind of like a snowman, but a sandman. Sandman. With shells and sticks and seaweed that seems to float about. I'm not gonna spend the time following whatever they're doing. Okay. With that, eventually you guys spent like about an hour there before the sun is at its fullest. You learn a couple of games from these kids. Water tag. And who can hold the, their breath the longest. Sometimes they cheat. <laughs> and for the rest. Uh, what are your plans? Uh, I think the Rizzo. Okay. I think the Rizzo would be interested in uh, getting a. A book and quill, right? And you're saying, tact uh, Isa? Yeah, so... I guess uh, me and Hash Brown will make our way to the water sports. Okay. We'll learn some wave riding. Alright. How about, uh, let's see. Are you going to inform, uh, Jane that you are yeah. moving? Hey, Jane. Uh, we, we're just gonna go over to the water sports over there. So, uh, yeah, come come by us if you when you're done playing. Hmm? Stay safe now. And then uh, Thor kind of walks towards one of the adult supervising and is like, uh, please keep an eye on her as well. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, from the looks of it, she's not really water trained. Thank you. No worries, the kids will be safe. They'll, they might teach her a thing or two. Oh, and... Welcome to Babram. Oh, thank you. We're having a great time here. Mm, we hope you do. I heard you are going to the clubs. It's yeah. just right ahead. Past oh, the, the temple. And the coconut farm. Oh, thank you. makes our way towards the uh, coconut farm. You guys continue to make your way there. You see some of the little fishing boats out at sea. Eventually you reach this rather big structure by the by the sea, by the beach. From, it's a, it's open. You can see right into the building. And inside of the building, you see this, uh, staircase that goes up to, uh, the second level. And on the second level, you have this huge horn that appears to be made by whale bones and at the edge of that sitting with her legs dangling down you see 
Saya balas song. Hey. The horn bearer. Hi, Saya. Hi. Uh, is this the Waters Club place or? Ah. And then you see her. She just props herself up and kind of like jumps down from that second level in a very elegant way, patting herself afterwards. No, this is the temple of the lost matriarch. The clubs are down there, up there. She points towards the direction of the clubs along. You see that little, uh, what appears to be a little hut over there? It's not really that little, but that little wooden structure over there. That would be the babe room first. This is an interesting building. Can you tell us more what what goes on here? You mean the temple? Yes. Oh, um, sure. Uh, right this way. She ushers you guys in. Um, please leave your footwear outside. Take our footwear off. Who else will be going into the temple? Okay. How about the Rizzo? Because I believe I think the Rizzo wanted to get like a book and quill, right? All right, so all three of you make your way inside removing your footwear okay <laughs> you see this thick pillars made of wood some bamboo when you step on to the the flooring you hear some Like, kind of like a... When you step on top of wood, like a... Sound. This temple has been here for quite a while. And... The deeper you get... Inside, like towards the center of this temple... You see... What appears to be a general shape of a whale. Does it look like a the temple is a carcass of a whale? Well, or just... you see bones decorate the the sides. A the thoracic. sides, and if you look, are you looking at the whale bones? Yes. The closer you. Uh, look into the whale bones. You notice that names are written on the bones. They're etched on it. Uh, Saya, what's <clears throat> uh, why saw these uh, whale bones? From the back of you guys, you hear this voice. I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch what you were saying. 
Uh, these, these whale bones, uh, they have names on them? And from behind you, you see this, uh, male sky blue dragonborn with shimmering golden eyes that appear to pierce through one's soul. He has two horns that are reminiscent of uh, birch wood in color that protrude out of his forehead. The one is long, like there's one longer at the front and a shorter one behind it. Well, this temple was set up for the whales that once grace our shores. And you see this uh, hulking uh, what do you call it? <clears throat> hulking dragonborn walk into your vision field of view. Thor hey. turns around and is like, oh, uh, hello. Hi. I am Zolan Orr, Warden of the Temple. What you're looking at is the bones of the last Midnight Whale. She was a matriarch. Ah. Must, must have been a huge whale. Yes, these whales could grow up to 10 to 20 meters in length. They're pretty sacred here around these parts. Did you... did you catch her or did she... No, we do not catch them, but unfortunately for this particular whale, and then he points towards the bones, she was separated from her pod, and her pod never came back after it's many years. So, eventually she died of old age to honor this great beast's legacy. Upon her death, we respectfully put her here in this temple and then he has this sash that is similar to bug tail sights sash her skin was made into these sashes to represent the leaders of this town we don't have an official leader per se that is true we work together as a community But, this is to identify us as one of the leaders here, made from her hide, passed down from leader to leader. Every citizen born or adopted into our society, we etch their names on it. Her bones to remember. Wow, that must be a lot of names. New, it is a lot of names. Thor is taking a closer look at the bones and. Thor, make a perception check. 
19 plus 3. Ooh, 19 plus 3. With that 19, you skim through the the names of that were etched on the bones. You see Darren Kinsmith's name, one of the fresher carvings. You also see Zolan Orr. You see Mira Bast, Tasha Tidings. You also see uh, an elven name that you're not familiar with. And also this name. Let me just get that name out. Oh, it's not here. What? Well, that's unfortunate. But you see this name here. Oh. Oh. Aha. Uh -huh. With that, you see, like, most of the bones have names etched on them. And uh, the name is somewhat on the fresher side? Of, no, like... you see this name at near uh, the head of the, uh, the okay. whale bones? And you can Dude. tell that it has been there for a very long time. Because oh, you see okay. it as like okay. blackened a little bit. Well, Thor obviously don't know this name though, right? Yep, he doesn't know. So he just, he just kind of sk skipped through it, I guess. Oh no. <laughs> so what brings you to the temple? Zolin asks. Well, we were just passing by through the water sport club and uh, we just want to learn a little bit about the place as we're walking by what does the uh, what does the horn up top do the horn is made out of the whale bone as you can see saya here she blows the horn in the morning noon and night speaking of i haven't heard the horn yet Saya. Ah! Right, right. Sorry, I, I was distracted. I, I, I saw our guests coming by and I, I thought I should greet them. Mm. Please blow the horn so that the community will know it is time for lunch. Oh. oh. And you see Saya just run up to the the spiral staircase upwards wait 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 can i can, can i blow the horn you may uh up this way so thor walks up with her thor you walk up the spiral staircase it it looks a little bit flimsy but when you step on it it's quite sturdy and you see this 
huge whale bone that was kind of like fashioned into this horn. All right. You will have... I am pretty sure you're a bard. So... You have to uh, hold... You have to be blowing this horn for a bit. Usually I do it with a little bit of flair, but... Let's see how well you can do it. Thor, I make am, a performance roll. I am the opposite of a bard as much as you can get. <laughs> oh, wait, I forgot. Because I see your name is Isa. Darn it. Uh, <laughs> Thor. Well, I'm pretty sure you have a... A big lung. I'm pretty sure you can do it. Performance? Yeah, performance. Here we go. Oh, not bad. 17 plus 1. Ooh, 17 plus 1. You take a deep breath. <laughs> Align your mouth to the mouthpiece. And when you start to blow into this horn, you blew softly at first it goes with like a soft like <laughs> sorry i don't think that that picked up but yeah we heard it we heard it but it was good enough that saya was impressed not bad I would say. Yeah, yeah, not too bad, right? Mm -hmm. It was a little short, but it was good enough. And then you see Shia, Saya, she just push, she gently pushes you aside and she takes in a deep breath and she blows the horn. And when she blew the horn, it's a different melody. It sounds ethereal. There are different, like, uh, into, uh, uh, tones to it. It goes high, low, in a very melodic way. Very mystifying. And after she's done, well, most of the, the, the horn bearer before me th didn't really know that you could change the tone if you blow it a certain way. They used to scold me for it, but now it's good. At least it's something different, I suppose. Nice. Mm hmm. Anyway, this is the horn. Horn. Thor. Thor horn. Uh. Hi, horn. She's a beauty. Anyway, your friends are waiting downstairs. Okay. I guess, uh, well, thank you for showing us around. We're just, uh, just appreciate it. We'll make our way back to the water sport club now, I guess. All right. In the meantime, I would say that, uh, Thor will get his, uh, book and quill. Oh, from the from the tower there, can Thor see Jane? Yep, you can see Jane. He's just taking a peek, checking if she's still alive. <laughs> Jane, at the distance, you can hear the horn. And uh, the what do you call this? Uh, the caretakers of the kids have uh, asked the children to gather around so that they can leave for their. Uh, little, little, uh, tea time. You see one of the... Them. Okay. You're gonna follow I, them? I can yeah. imagine Jane just, like, prancing this along with them. <laughs> <laughs> you see the kids just, like, gathering around, uh, Jane, <laughs> asking her questions so where did you come from
Oh, okay. She's quiet. She's shy. <laughs> Uh, I guess I'd uh, just recount the stories of uh, Nor, Nor, Northern, Northern, Northern Forest. Nor, I'm pretty sure it's not Northern, but something like that. Norvan, Northern, the Doran. No, 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 Doran, the Doran Forest. It's like, whoa, we've never seen a forest like that. That's be so cool. <sighs> then talk about trees and the houses on the trees. Wow. Is that like a tree house? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh amazing. Very cool. It's actually a lot a lot like your 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 village that you have here. And it's just ones by the sea and then ones on the trees. Ones by the sea and ones by the Oh. Hey, it rhymes! It rhymes! It rhymes! Alright, children. Please, settle down. We need to do a little head count. And then you see, uh, the... One of the, the two guardians just watching, counting them. Alright, seems that we are all present. Shall we proceed? And you see the you see the kids like, yeah, and they kind of like line up by pairs. All of them holding hands. We're ready. <coughs> Ooh, what was that? <coughs> Ooh, very loud. Um, okay. Uh, with that, we will look back to Isa. Hey, no, Isa. Uh, oh. Thor <laughs> and the rest. You guys are now way down, down. Wait, no, wait. As <laughs> as Thor comes down, Hefron asks, Hey, which which toot was yours? Which horn was uh which song was your one? Hmm. Give a guess. I would say the more brutish, less beautiful one. Of course, <laughs> I am the manly Thor. Oh. <laughs> the the manly Thor, which was like bottom half covered with sand by the time we reached here, is that the same Thor we're talking about? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Secretly, Hashbrown's impressed Thor can even move with his bottom half covered with sand on top of the heavy armor. <laughs> Most of, most of the sand has been like is like when he took his uh his boots off, mm -hmm. it kinda like flushed down like from his pants. But like yeah. every time he walks it's like sand still like up his crack and rubbing, <laughs> rubbing the metal against his butt. <laughs> oh god. That is so <laughs> like, uncomfortable. Like sandpaper. Oh god. That's 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 scary. That's frightening. <laughs> anyway, you guys, are you going to excuse yourself from uh, yes. Zolin? Zolin nods his head if you ever want to talk <coughs> about the history of Baybrim. You're welcome to come by the temple again. Thank you so much for showing us around. We really appreciate it. It's been really insightful. Right. Come on, Saya. We have some work to do. Alright. Excuse us. We will need to attend to certain matters. 
Have fun. Thank you. Yeah. So, kind of walks off and waves back. You see uh, Saya just wink at you. Oh. And you guys are back on your way to the clubs. You notice that uh, once you exit out north towards the clubs, you notice like a huge field of coconut trees. You see some people working on them. Some of them are climbing it. Dropping coconuts from uh, the top. And you hear this... Uh, as they fall to the ground. And some of the men and women are collecting it. And up ahead you can hear laughs. Laughters. And a little bit of bantering. As you reach the clubs. Hello? One of the- oh! You, you When you said hello, one of them turns around. You see this rather athletic uh, female human with braided dark brown hair and golden brown eyes. She looks to you and tilts her head. Hey! I suppose you're new here. Yeah, it brings you we're, we're... over to this side of town. Are you lost? Uh, we're visiting Babram and we heard that you guys are really good at... Uh, I'm sorry, is it called water riding? Or wave riding? Oh, you mean... Wind riding. Wind riding, yes. And we're, we're like... We'd like to at least... Uh, See and maybe maybe learn. Oh, okay. Well, it does take a lot of practice. And one of them, uh, one of the a taller male, uh, kind of slender but muscular built half orc with uh ochre brown and curly hair tied into a bun. His eyes are a uh, teal in color. He looks to you guys. You know, if you're gonna learn how to wind ride, it's best that you know the basics. But, <laughs> they're new. Just let them have fun, Ronan. I'm just saying, they need to know the basics before they attempt to wind ride. Did I learn the basics when I tried to wind ride Ronan? <coughs> No, you didn't. You went straight for it and almost drowned. That was one time. That one time was your first time. Well, this it's going to be different if we teach them. Well, I'm just saying that if you want to learn how to win, right? It's best you know the basics. The simple rules that come with win riding. Ronan. Ronan, listen. Look, do you, do you think they're here to learn the history and... And... Um, I don't know, the safety of wind riding? It appears that they might be interested. Do you want yourself, so. Chad? Uh, you want I mean... I'm pretty athletic, and I think uh, my friend here, uh, Hajran, is also. I mean, maybe you can show us a couple of times and see how it goes. If we can't do it, when we can. Yeah, Hajran is confident investing in Thor any day. <laughs> oh, this, uh, I'm Thor, and this is my friend Hash Brown here. And Teresa is uh, in the back. Teresa won't be participating. I'm guessing 
Dr. Rizzo nods his head as he brings out his book and quill, starts scribbling stuff on his uh, book. <laughs> you know what? We can settle this our way. You, golden brown boy, you're with us. You're with the shallows and the deep. And you... Elf? You join them, the Babram First Wind Riders. Let's see who will get the best student by our methods. <coughs> After. <laughs> Hashman says bring it on. Alright. Well, I suppose we can do that. It would be very insightful. I suppose. Come along. Um, sorry, I didn't quite catch your name. Uh, Elf? Thor? Thor? Thor Thorothil. And yes. you are Ronin? Ronin Tidings. I'm the oh, captain of the Babram First Windriders. Alright, come this way. We'll take you to the club. And with that, uh, he leads Tor. Thor into uh, the Babram First Windriders Club, which is just a, like a couple of walks away from uh, the shallows and the deep. All right. Looks like we're, you're with us now, Golden. Golden Brown. Right. This way. Come with me. In the distance, you guys can see what wave riding is. You have this long uh, sail with what appears to be like a attached to a uh... <laughs> oh god. <laughs> To a surfboard as they glide through water with the wind pushing them through the waves cutting through right through it or gliding them along with it all right golden brown the name's Corey. Mm. Pretty shy one, this one. Mm -hmm. Cash Brown is just, his mind is just focused on looking at the wind glider and thinking, hmm, how, how can I beat Thor? I know, sabotage is the way. Oh god. <laughs> no one hears this, but Hash Brown just thinks this to himself. Yeah. Uh. Hash Brown will look for any opportunity to sabotage Thor. <laughs> Alright. Um, so, first, you're gonna need to strip. Lee's armor and everything. Mm -mm. No can do. You're gonna definitely drown. So I suggest you leave it right there, and she points it to this, like, little rack. Uh, you're talking- that's for- Uh, that's for Golden Hash- Brown, right? Yeah, Hash Brown, yeah. Yeah. Uh, H Hash Brown takes off his cloak, but it's still wrapped in bandages, so he looks like, like oh. a mummy. Or someone in a CGI suit, you know? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> CGI suit Hash Brown. <laughs> uh. You see Corey raising, raising an eyebrow, it's like... Hash Brown says, don't worry, waterproof, uh, waterproof bandages. Okay. Are you injured by any means because 
I know that, you know, I, what I was saying before about safety, we could ignore that, but I'm kind of worried now that you have your whole body. No, no, no. I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I'm only a mage. You know, it dies to 1d4 damage. <laughs> uh, hmm. Corey looks confused at why you said that, but okay. She, she, she nods her head. Sure. Uh, we'll lend you this, uh, this training, uh, Windrider. Okay. All right. So, what do you know about water? Can you swim? Yes. Wait, Hedron's a changeling, right? So, can he transform into like a aquatic animal? Or at least, uh, like, alter his body to have flippers or gills? Yes, you may. Uh, yeah. So what are you going to... So, you alter your body... You have flippers and gills, right? Yeah. Well, give me a moment. That's cheating. <laughs> okay. Ah, oh, there's another key shaz here. Oh no. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm back. Okay, welcome back. So you transform yourself to have gills and web feet and hands. Yeah. But the thing is, you're inland. So the moment you transformed yourself into that, you are starting to heave. Like... <laughs> nah, I, I, I don't show it, but I am. So I immediately transform back. Is it possible to have both gills and lungs? I mean, uh, gills and be able to breathe normally? I would say it's it's possible if you would have said it. But otherwise, uh, I would take yeah. it as you only have like, <laughs> gills on, so you started to heave in front of her, and she looks very concerned right now. Well, um... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I say, um, don't worry about it, I'm fine. <laughs> It's very interesting of you to um, I uh, could do that kind of a transformation. That I I find that very interesting and endearing, really. <laughs> no, I, I asked Maybe... her. Is, is there any transformations I can do to help boost my performance? Well, you definitely could be, you know, a fish, but maybe this time in water. Yeah. True. <laughs> All right, take this. Uh, we will teach you the basics. So she passes you this wave writing board, which is folded. Mm -hmm. And leads you towards the water where her crew are waiting for her. In the meantime, we will head over to Thor. And Ronan. Okay. Since she gave you to me, I presume that you also kind of maybe share our values for proper wind riding. Uh, sure, I go, I'll go for that. Right. First things first, you can't wear that armor while you wind ride. You'll drown. So I would suggest that you remove your armor and put on something more comfortable. Tell you the truth, I've been itching to take this off for ages. <laughs> you should have removed it before you approached the beach. Thor starts like taking it off, <clears throat> just like rubbing his ass as he takes it off. It's like, <laughs> oh, right. Uh, I probably assume that it will take like a minute or two for you to, you know, undress, yeah. get into something more comfy. Well, here we go. Uh, well, tell me, can you swim? Yes, I can swim. We learned that in the, in the army. That's good, that's good. 
At least you know the basics. I pretty sh I assume that you also know how to float. Yes. In the ocean, where the waves come at you at. Ah. Uh, no, not in the ocean, but. Uh, we've been in rough weather lakes before, but not in the ocean. Mm. But I assume you would get the drift, yes? With your experience yeah. in the in the army. Hmm. Yeah. Mm. Right. Yeah. Okay. Be okay. Um he whistles to one of his uh crew members. Oi. Hey, get me a get me a training wind rider. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got one right here. And then one of his uh teammates <coughs> come over. Passes him uh, a training windrider. This is a windrider. This is the board. He points to the, the slender body. That is uh, from about a, the, the height of a human. A regular human. And this canvas thing over here. And he unfurls it. This is what you're going to use to capture wind. You will guide it. And push you around. Did you get it? Uh, is this like a... Like a kite looking thing? It's like a sail. Okay. Yeah. And then he uh, puts off, the... Off. Of character is it like a is it like a more like a windsurf or like a kite board windsurf okay got it okay so he puts the the board on the ground unfolds it opens it up and when he opens it up it quickly catches the wind and there's like a string at the back which is which is what he's holding on to so this is the rope that you pull, tug on to direct you to whichever direction you want to maneuver. Right. Please stand over the board. So I step on the board. Kinda. Right now we are on <coughs> so on land, so it's easier. But on water, it will be very different. There will be a lot of things that you will need to take note of. Balance. The strength of the current under your under your board the strength of the wind that blows around you these are factors that we need to take note of when wind riding here and then he aligns you to the board bending your knee and getting you to hold the rope to adjust and you feel this uh strength a gust of wind just quickly like hit you as you feel this sail catching wind make a strength saving throw strength 10 plus 2 you notice that this 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 uh the amount of gust was strong enough to to actually jolt you a little bit to your left. And it's not as easy as you think it is. Or struggles as he tried to hold on. Right. Oh. Okay. Gonna be quite exhausting. It will quick. be, but once you get used to it, it feels like... You're flying a mechanism over water. It would be easy. Yeah. Rather. But for now, because you are a beginner, we will just run through the basics. And with that, I will take a five minute break for a five or five or <coughs> ten minute break for you guys to go use the loo or get refresher water supply. Because I am parched and I need water. I'll be right back. Okay, thank you. Okay.
Breakfast time. And I am back. Oh, what did you miss? You didn't miss much. Uh, Therizo is at the back using her uh, his book, taking notes of uh, something, I suppose. Uh, what did you miss? You we we're at the club now, and Hash Brown went to one team, and Thor went to another team, and we we're being taught how to be friends. All right, everyone here, or yeah, I'm here. Okay. All right. We will quickly turn back to Hash Brown as you mm -hmm. are guided to the beach side. All right. Golden Brown, all you got to do is follow me. You see this string right here? Yeah. Remember this string. This will guide you left, right, up, down, center, up, down, wherever you want. All right? And then she okay. unfurls her her board, lays it on on the on the beach, at the the at the waves and pushes it deeper in. Come on. Follow. Yeah, okay, I I follow. You follow her, and then once like your the water is around your chest level, you see her get up on her board. Now, it is your turn to get up on the board. Make okay. a dexterity saving throw. Twenty-one. Uh, eighteen plus three. Ooh. You just watch. You just watch Corey get on her boat. I'm oh, sorry, yeah, on her boat, on her board, and mm -hmm. you kind of mimic the same thing. So you do the same. You jump over your board. Your feet firmly placed on the board, and then yeah. you pull the string to your back, and you start to feel it catching wind, as as the as the wind guides you to towards the left side, and you see Corey looking at you with with looking amazed and impressed, huh? Not bad for a beginner, huh? All right, now let's see you direct that. Let's see you direct that board to where we we need to go, and then she points towards the deeper end. All right. 
follow me. She tugs onto the rope. Uh, maneuvers her board to the... To the right. And I assume you would make the same. So with that, yep. make an athletics check. Okay, athletics check. Uh... Sorry, I'm, I'm on mobile right now. I need to see where I make all the checks and throws. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> mm. My gosh, mobile is so hot. <sighs> where do I see that? Are you using the app? Uh, I'm using the uh, d and Beyond website. Oh, uh, under skills, okay. Athletics? Mm hmm Okay. Nine. Hmm. You struggle a little bit, but you eventually made it. It took you maybe <laughs> a hot minute before you actually catch up to her. But you're doing mm -hmm. you're doing pretty good so far. Yeah. As you let the wind carry you. Alright. Now we wait. We're gonna wait for the for the wave to come to us. So mm -hmm. unflur your hold back your uh sail and we'll just hang out here. Okay, I do the, just that. Enjoy the sun. I mean you can't really fully enjoy it from the looks of <laughs> it, but we're gonna sit here and watch. Because it seems that you have a pretty good memory or feel for things. And then she, you, as you sit down with her, you see other members of her crew taking up the smaller waves, sailing through through them on top of it cutting straight up twirling their boats uh their 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 boards mid-air and catching themselves as they land back on the waves gliding right through it to the very <laughs> edge in the meantime we will head to thor thor you were taught the very basics of Health and safety with the board. Uh, All right. I assume that you get the gist of it now. How about we take yeah. you and your board for a little spin? Fold it up. And let's head to shore. You see him. He grabs his board. Some of his crew also follow him. And you guys walk towards the shore. And as you are walking towards shore, you're able to see uh, Hash Brown's uh, progress. You see him get up on the, on the board quite easily. <coughs> and then you see him manage to sail about. Oh, a, a bit, a little, uh, a little, you can see him struggle a little bit, but he still manages to do so. And then you hear a voice, don't worry about them. They have a unconventional way of doing things. Oh, don't worry, I'm not concerned. I know that the basic foundations always build a better, better skill moving forward. You'll be a valued member here at my club. Anyway. Drop the boards on the on the water, and let's push it until we are chest level. He does as instructed. Mm hmm You see other the other crew members just do the same, but they're way ahead of you guys. Like they they immediately went sailing after they touched water. They kind of whisk past you. 
All right. Now. The hard part. Time to get on the board. And you see him, he, he kind of pushes himself up, props himself up to the board in a sitting position. And Thor, make a dexterity saving throw. Dexterity? Mm -hmm. Can I do strength? <laughs> okay, I will allow that. Either dexterity nice. or strength. Okay, 16. Hmm. 16. You... You see, you, you, you've you known the, the wee basics of it all. And you manage to prop yourself up following the same metic meticulous way that uh, Ronan has taught you. And you're now following him in a sitting position. You see him stand up, pull the rope behind him, so that he could uh, maneuver about. Alright. You should do the same. Make an athletics check. Uh, oh, shit. Is that a nat 20? No, no, no. It's an 18 plus 4. Unlike what you saw before, Hash Brown struggling, you found it a lot easier, though. As you feel the wind, the gust of wind pushing your, your boards left and right, but you manage to follow uh, Ronan's lead as you are not too far behind him, like maybe a meter or two away, but close enough for you to like almost match up. Huh. It seems that you're a natural at this. You hear Ronan. Thor is just struggling in the back a little bit, just like, yeah, he's keeping up, but you know, he's just concentrating. I'm I'm trying. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> up ahead, there is a wave that's coming in. Prop your, put yourself in the ready position. Follow me. You see him. He turns around, like he does a one, maybe a one twenty angle. His uh, his sail folded, waiting for the wind to catch. Are you going to do the same? Yep, I'm gonna mimic him. All right, it's almost here. Make a dex. Oh no, you know what? I'll give you two choices. Mm -hmm. Acrobatics or athletics. Oh, athletics for sure. Okay. Make oh, your roll. Good. <laughs> oh, <a> no. <laughs> As you follow him. Oh, I know this very well. You. You were able to, like, prop your. Uh, your. Uh, what do you call this? Your sail in time. But the gust of wind that came, that was caught by your sail was so strong that it propelled you so fast, way too fast, that you lose your balance and fall off your board. And you see uh, Ronan, he just like glides alongside you, turning about. He's like, uh, are you all right? Uh... Thor is going to struggle with the sail on top of him for a little bit. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Hang on. And then he's um, just grabbing the tip of the sail and just walking himself, like, just with handholds. Mm -hmm. and, like, and then trying to get back on the board. Wow, that caught me off guard. Well, the winds are 
strong. You shouldn't let your guard down. Doris kind of hop back onto the board, straddling the board, and then uh, carefully stands up and haul the sail up again. Maybe one more try? Sure. One more try. But I think <coughs> Corey and her crew might be using the next wave. We can just make way for them. Come on. Sail this way. And then he sails away towards uh, the right direction. The right side. Making space for Corey and her crew to use the next wave. So we head back to Hash Brown. All right. All right, Golden Brown. This wave is ours. You ready? Okay. Yep. Okay. Don't forget, keep your your board angled, and don't forget, catch the wind. Mm -hmm. uh, Hash Brown transformed his feet to have more grip on the board, and... Uh, and his hands to have more grip on the rope, so he wouldn't fall easily. Okay. <clears throat> Make an acrobatics or athletics check. Okay. Yeah, I'm going for acrobatics. Mm -hmm. Oh, a seven. <laughs> oh god. Uh... Jeez. So, for you, yours in particular, they were waiting for the bigger wave. So as you prop yourself up, try to get the hang of it, and as the waves start to swell up beneath you, you begin to feel your board moving um erratically and as you begin to sail downwards catch the wind the you just like what happened to thor the gust of wind that was captured was so strong that it propelled you out you actually flew off your board Ooh. and as you flew out of your board you begin to roll under the waves like you know like roll roll like a ball <laughs> and eventually okay. you you reach like near the shore where uh is about like chest level mm. deep and you and you see Corey just uh gliding towards you <laughs> well it happens to all first timers don't worry come on get up yeah. we've got more mm. hash Brown gets back on the board And <laughs> can I try again? Mm hmm. Do I make another roll? Um, you're gonna try again? Yeah. Alright. First, you gotta get on the board, so make a um, dexterity or strength. Okay. Uh, 11. Mm hmm. 11. So you managed to get back on your board. And with that, you follow her lead. You sail back up to the deep end where you see Thor and the rest getting ready to take the next wave. So for Thor, this is your time. All right. Is your second wave. Let's see how you fare. Ready? Ready. Don't forget. Don't let the elements get the hold of you. You begin to feel the water swell under your board. Make a athletics or acrobatics check. Come on, bro. Okay, 16 plus 4. We got it. A dirty 20. Nice. 
Second time around, you can have better footing on your board. He's you braced. you got you got better understanding on the elements that affect you your sailing. And you manage to sail like at the the most basic sail, like one across uh one across the uh across the wave length. And you made it out safely as you, as your board begins to slow down, you turn it around. You are now in front of uh, the shallows and the deep, where you see hash brown soaked. Mm -hmm. Looking at you, hash brown, is there anything you want to say? Hash brown says nothing but uh, cast frostbite. On the water that is down a uh, Thor's butt crack. <laughs> what? Yeah, you, you know, when when you're at the sea, you get wet. The water down your crack, yeah, I'm gonna freeze that. Mm. That's a good idea. But... Constitution saving throw. <laughs> oh, you wanna go for it. Okay. Yeah, let's go. Alright, constitution saving throw then. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh! A dirty 20. You got oh my gosh. On me, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, Hashron accidentally freezes the water underneath Thor instead. <laughs> and Thor is just too in the zone. You try that. Uh, hash brown but when you did that you didn't see any effect on him you just see this smug look on Thor's face as he passes he turns around with his board and sails back to back to the Babram first clubs all right hash brown it is your turn okay uh, yeah, so I tried to ride the wave. Second time. Mm -hmm. Second time's a charm, right? Acrobatics check. Oh, right. You make your acrobatics check. Ten. Oh, that's not too bad. You try again. You struggled. Uh, but this time you didn't let the the elements get the better of you. But you were able to do it Although not as graceful as Thor, but you still mm. manage nonetheless. Thor wants to cra cast Frostbite, but in his junk instead of his my butt crack. Yeah. Okay. Cast what? Frost frostbite. <laughs> <laughs> you have Frostbite. I have Frostbite. I'm returning oh, no. the favor. Oh no. Okay, so uh, I, I need it. to make. I need to make a constitution saving throw. What what does he need to do? Uh yeah, constitution saving honest. throw um... Ooh, 19 plus 4. Ooh. <laughs> oh damn. You start to feel your crotch getting like uncomfortable there. <laughs> but you manage to wave off that um what do you call that? There, there's a term for it, right? Um, for that scare tactic. And though though you were able to shake it off, uh, the Ronan and Corey does notice something is off between the two of you. But they just shake it off. Maybe it's a friendly, I don't know, friendly something. <laughs> All right. Hey, Hash Brown. Yeah? You think you're ready to beat them? Of course, any day. Alright. You see that wave over there? The one that's come barreling towards us? The yeah. big one? Yeah. You're gonna take that. Okay. And at the same time, uh, Ronan tells Thor, You see that wave over there? 
Let's assert yeah. our dominance. <laughs> I believe you can do it. Alright, let's get in position. Come on. Hey, we get in position? You guys are all in position now? How about you, Hash Brown? Yep, I also get into position. Alright, this is a big wave. Alright, I will say this as both of them speaking to you so that I don't have to repeat myself. Okay. Alright, this is gonna be a big wave. In the middle of it, once you meet with the other, you have to joust them out of their board. <laughs> with pleasure. Alright. You ready? Yeah. The wave's ready. coming in hot. Both of you roll for either a um an athletics or acrobatics with advantage. Okay. Can we do like whoever has higher get like advantage when we do whatever uh, the fight? Okay. Or something. I will I will allow that, yes. Oh, my highest is a eighteen. Yeah, my highest is a fourteen, so Okay. <laughs> Hash Brown has advantage on the joust. Yeah. All right, this is how it's going to work. So, you guys both managed to get to your uh station. You managed to ride the wave perfectly. And now, you guys are about to meet halfway. Mm -hmm. Both of you make an arm an arm strike. But for Hash Brown, you had advantage. Oh, wow. 19. Oh, uh, highest is 12. As you two come colliding down, barreling towards each other, uh, Thor, what is your uh, armor class without your armor? 10. 10. Okay, so both of you actually hit, hit each other. But because I would say that, um, let's just roll for this, shall we? Thor, how are you going to do this? Okay, so uh, I think uh, Hash Brown has a better ride. So he's like in a better position. He's, I think, a uh, better <laughs> angle, let's say, for engagement. Mm -hmm. So when... Hash Brown try to like do a punch or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know how 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 Hash Brown would strike. How would Hash you Brown, strike how... Hash Brown? Uh, since I got the high ground, I would first warn Thor not to try it. Don't try it, Thor. I got the high ground. Oh no! So and and then and I kick. I place my foot on his face. You betrayed me. <laughs> no, Thor. You were like a brother to me. <laughs> okay, then Thor, how would you do this? <laughs> Thor uh, pushes his sail down, uh, so he, so the sail becomes like a wing, mm -hmm. like with the wind on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of like riding the wind in the bottom, and mm -hmm. then dodges that. Wait, does the kick, the kick hits me, right? No, uh, it does actually. Both okay, of you so hit each other. So so it kicks me in the face. So I'm like partially on my way down and then mm -hmm. on the way down I use the sail as a like a wing to cushion mm -hmm. to lift me up mm -hmm. and then uh, I kick his knee since I'm already low okay yeah. with that you kicking him at the knee he him kicking you at the He's... at the knee uh, at the face both of you make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. I think we should be technically like pretty much fucked by now. <laughs> Wait, no, that's a check. Ah, oh, this is safe. Eight oh, and God. ten. <laughs> ten. I think we're both on the in the water. <laughs> you guys are both definitely in the water as like that happens. <laughs> The first one to fall, however, is Hash Brown. As you kick him at the knee, 
he falls flat on his belly on a board and he tumbles into the wave. And for Thor, you being kicked at the face, you lean backwards, your your board flies up into the air as you land back first into the wave and the both of you start tumbling inside of it. Eventually, uh, you guys both reach shore and make another dexterity saving throw. Oh, wow. 19 plus 3. Wow. Uh, 6. Oh, darn. For th- <laughs> <laughs> you, you see both of your boards heading straight right towards you. Uh, for uh, Hash Brown, you see it coming, so you manage to evade it. You manage to roll to your side, and that board just whooshes past. But for Thor, uh, you didn't see the board coming, as you were like kind of like in the middle of a uh, tumbling backwards in- onto shore, and this board just slams right onto your gut, dealing. Uh, Four points of bludgeoning damage. <laughs> this, this nails me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Do we take damage for the hit with the face? If you want to damage, yeah. Do you want to roll for damage? Uh, I don't know. I don't know either. I think it's two. We, we don't have to, I think it's... I think it's just a flat... Oh no, that's for... For hash brown, it's a flash... It's a one damage for him, and for you, it's a two. Okay. Yeah. So for for uh, Hashbron, you get two points of bludgeoning damage, and for Thor, you get one plus four <laughs> total. <That's> a <laughs> lot of damage. <laughs> and. Upon seeing that you see both of the the teens coming back to shore, going to check up on you guys, and you see Corey is like, Whoa, that was awesome, Hash. Wait, I don't know your name, but you have Hash Brown all over you before, so. <coughs> that was awesome, Hash Brown. Yeah. Finally, someone gets my name on the first try. <laughs> well, it's the second try. I called you Golden Brown. That's my alias, so it's fine. I'll take it as the first. Alright. But I I feel like golden brown suits you more, you know? I don't mind. And you see uh, Ronan coming in together with uh, Corey and the others. It's like, hey, that's not too bad for for beginners. Go on, get up here. And then you see Ronan offering his hand up. I take the hand. Thor's holding his stomach. <laughs> I say, oh, off, and then gives uh, gives his hand to Ronan. All right, and then you see, he just like pulls you up like effortlessly. Don't worry, it happens to some of us. Sometimes a board likes to hit us in the gut. Apparently, my board likes me more than yours, Thor. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, the board hits harder than you can. Ooh, darn. <laughs> Big ha- ha- Hash Brown uses catapult to fling a hash brown at Thor. You don't have a hash brown right now, so you're oh. flinging air. <laughs> uh, no, that hash brown just scoops up water and throws at Thor. And that is how it became a full arm water fight. So Hash Brown started to splash water at, at Thor and the other the members of the uh, Babram First Club, they also do the same as they begin tossing water, splashing all about, everyone's getting wet, everyone's having fun. In the meantime, we will move to Jane. Yes. Jane, you follow the kids as they have their lunch breaks. You follow them back to the Hall of Plenty, where you see people are coming in, having their uh, tea time lunch break, after hearing the horn. And you notice that 
there's a group of uh, people surrounding uh, one of the one of uh, what appears to be a waveborn. You you could recognize this by the sash that they wear. You see this a uh, female gnome with uh, natural short red hair and golden skin. Her face kind of squarish with a cut on her upper lip. She's calming the rest down like, <laughs> calm down. We'll take questions one by one. We heard about, we heard about what happened. Is it true? Our son is back. Yes, that's that's quite true. Yes, we we found him in the coconut fields. But something's not right with him, so we're keeping him in quarantine. But he's been gone for so long. What about What about him? He has been gone. He left Babum. But he's still our son nonetheless. Okay, calm down. We will inform everyone once we know what's going on. Okay? We don't want to get too much attention around this. So please. Head back to your stations. We will talk about this during the meeting. Jane, from one ed from the edge of uh, your table, you can hear this. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna walk over and let's go. Oh, um, it it's Darren Kinsmith. He's back. Oh come on, I I told you to. <clears throat> Yes. The person we're looking for, right? Yes. Where's where's he at? He's in the holding area. Oh. There's something uh, wrong with him. Uh maybe I can help? Can I go see him? I'm a I'm a healer. Sure, we could use all the help that we can get. Bug is with him right now. Come, follow me. The rest of you, just return to your stations. We'll talk about this tonight during dinner. Okay? And you see the rest of the, the people nod their head. All of them looking worried. Sorry. Don't mind if I ask, but are you one of um are you one of those from Kestos sent here to look into the matter? Yeah, I am. Uh, the others are not here at the moment, but but they're around. That's good. It's very good to know. Sorry, um, my name is Trillia. Trillia Blue Seer. I'm the uh, Sea Breaker I... here. Sea Breaker. Mm hmm. How do you break the sea? Well, it's a title given to um, the protectors of this place. You see, back in the day, there used to be a lot of pirates coming in, raiding our village. I took up arms against them, fought them off. And the people here started calling me Seabreaker. Uh, I was wondering... 
No one here looks like the fighting type. We may not look like the fighting type, but we are strong. Together, organized, we can defeat pirates, bandits. Yeah, because I was worried when we came here, there was bandits on the road. Not far from here. Mm, I was told, yes. They try to come around. It should, some of them even try to take our children. But they were not successful. We may look like a very peaceful town, but... There are some of us who are capable enough to protect. She leads you towards, uh... Towards the northern end of the, the town. Right next to where the coconut and the farmlands are. There's this little hut. That is kind of furnished. Pretty well furnished. You can tell that uh, someone did spend quite a bit of money on this home. This is where Darren Keensmith lived. Or lives. And inside you can you can from the inside you can see some light some glowing green light inside let me go see him sure and then she goes up to the uh door opens it ushers you in you see yep. inside bug tail sight looking at something on a on a counter table countertop my I've not seen anything as bizarre as this. Is there anything you need to do? You notice that there's this body that with blackened skin on the table. Is that the guy? You can assume that it is him. Oh! Hey there, little... Little missus. Is he sick? Frankly speaking, I'm... Not sure. From the looks of it, he seems to be... Cursed. Is it the same thing that I saw on Hash Brown? Make an insight check. Oh wait, yeah. Make it in either investigation or insight. Ooh, that makes a lot of difference. 19. Ooh, which one did you roll for? Insight. Insight. With that nine... plus 9... Five Ooh, okay, okay. So with that, you... Wait, let me just double check something inside. Oh, your 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 medicine is also five. It's alright. Alright, so you look at the body of this uh, rather buff person. You see the same black veins that pulsate up his body, starting from the edge of his fingers and his toes. Rising up to his legs and limbs. You see him struggling. To. To contain the pain that he's feeling. Oh, what's happening to me? I want to cast Cure Wounds level 1. 
You cast Cure Wounds level 1. Make your roll. Uh, 8 would be plus 8 if it works. Okay, plus 8. Okay. Let me just write that down. You see just a tiny bit of that ashen uh, skin retract backwards a little bit. But you still see this man in pain. Can you can you talk? Is he is he awake? He is he is uh, awake. I can wake him up if you want. He was rather erratic earlier on. But Please. I will need to hold him. You see him he you see his eyes kind of like glow for a wee moment. And as you, as you see uh, this man on the on the table start to uh, rise, you see him go like, Wah! and then suddenly you see this uh, vines pop out from uh, the table around you, and holds him down as you see him struggling to 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 get off. <clears throat> Let me go. Ah! I, I, uh, I know you're hurting a lot, but I need to know where you got this from. What happened to you? Uh, I don't know. They, they just got me. Uh. Guts? <laughs> Someone guts at you? Yeah. And it was... Who? Uh, hold on a second, mi young missus. And you see Bug calmly just takes a deep breath. Mutters some incantation. And you see uh, the man slowly get into this somewhat rather trance-like... state uh, I don't know they just took us and... I ran away but with another Where were you taken away? Where were you where were you when you were taken away? And were, was there you said there was another? Was there someone else with you? There was. I and then you see him start to like struggle to remember. Oh I'm so thirsty. <sighs> uh she was an, an, an elf with silver hair. Sorry, I didn't get that. She was an elf with silver hair. Where is she now? I don't know. They were separated. She's your friend? I, I can't say for sure, but they took us. I I think her name was... Blisswin. I know. He was Blisswin. Where were you when you were taken, and how many were there? There were many. 
they, they, they told me that if I trained the newcomers, I would, I would be relieved of this pain and thirst. Train them in what? Thirst. I I need I need to drink. I'm gonna cast another level one cure wounds on him again. When you cast that, it doesn't work. <laughs> You just see him get more agitated and you see the 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 black veins consuming faster. Oh, who, who are they? I don't know. They were wearing white robes. They said something about Creating an army for your leader. And you hear Bugtail side go like, All right, little missus, I won't be able to hold him much longer. I will need to put him to sleep. All right. You hear, you hear a bug say, whisper a soft sorry to the man. Before encanting some words. And, and then you see this man slowly drifting to sleep. I'm gonna tell Box that. Uh, this uh, is not the first time we've seen this. There are more like him. And it's not something a traditional medicine or magic can cure anymore i think he, if you if you want to cure this you have to find the source of it i know and you see bug kind of like feel around his back for like a chair he finds one props it under you and finds another and props it under himself he sits on top of that chair, bent down his arms, both on his leg. One of them is shaking. Do you uh, know of this white hooded people? I've only heard about them in stories. Wasn't sure if this was real. They could be followers of this. Who are they? From what I heard, they... They consume blood in honor of their god. But I'm not too sure. I haven't really encountered any of the likes, I don't think. Do they have a name? From what I know, it has something to do with this Alzuan. Sorry, I got up. They might have something to do with this Alzuan. No? So got cut? Alzuan? Yeah. Yeah, you got cut again. I'm, I'm guessing it's Alzuan. Yeah, it's Alzuan. Huh. Stories say that they consume blood to get energy, vigor, to fight. And if you say your friend is like this too, I'm pretty sure he has a vial of blood with him. I Technically, I did not say that. Oh, I thought you said that... You, you, you. We've seen, we've seen more like the him. 
Ah, okay, so I redact that. Who might you say is like him? Do you know anyone? We were, uh, there were, we were investigating these missing people uh, at, at the clinic. Mm -hmm. They were recorded to have the same symptoms. The same symptoms. What else did you find out? Sensitive. Sensitive to? Sensitive light. Wearing bandages. Mm -hmm. And the same rot that cannot be... You mean healed. like these bandages? And then he scoots onto the side of his chair, picks up this bandages, all bloodied and worn. Where's that from? It came from him. He was covered with it. Yeah, yeah. Just like your friend. Then he looks at you. Is there anything you're not telling me, little missus? This... To be honest, I don't really know... ...much about it. Hmm. Let me see. There's really nothing much we can do about this, huh? Regular magic doesn't seem to work. You gotta find the people, those guys. If you say it comes from the source, we need to find the source, but who is the source? The reason would know more about this. I should go find her. Definitely. You go find where your friend is. I'll keep watch over her. Darren. You're not gonna even let me roll for this action, huh? Uh, go find Teresa. Alright. Be safe. And you see, uh, Bug just let out a huge, disappointed sigh. As you leave, you can hear him apologize. In the meantime, somewhere out there, a group of people clothed in black with silver and gold accents lining their cloaks and armor. Yes. We hear you. If you let us come and see this abomination, we will see to it that he is dealt with properly. We 
We are close by. Let us know if this needs to be handled the proper way. These cloaked humanoid figures watch from afar as the seaward breeze just brush past them, revealing a mask fashioned to look like wolves. And that's where we end today's session. Thank you guys for playing. Hey. Nice. Mm, Salt session in comparison. Thank you guys for playing. I know it's been so long. A lot of things that nothing to catch up. Thanks for DMing. Uh, I hope to see you guys uh, next week. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, Theresa would join us because I feel like there is so many things that Theresa could have done with her book and quill. So I'm <laughs> excited to see what happens in the next session. The I still must be on that. I can't do next Sunday. Oh, okay, it's right. Uh, after. Okay, sure, no problem. We'll just take note of that. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, if you can't make it the Sunday, uh, I will let you in. An, I will let you know in advance, or you can let me know in advance what your character might want to do, mm -hmm. so that we can proceed on without much uh, delay. James doing the team this session, doing all the work <laughs> while we're off, like fucking around. <laughs> yeah, like me, me and Thor just uh, wing gliding, and Thor suffers five damage from it. Oh god, that's so. Oh, that's just unfortunate. Anyway, I'm gonna end the stream. Say bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.